Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, God, for life, breath, strength. Lord, just for the ability to do the things we take so much for granted, Lord, the ability to stand, the ability to hug each other, the ability to put a great big smile on our faces. Just those things we take for granted. We thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to minister your word and to receive what you have to say to us. So, Lord, I humble myself this morning. I give you all of me, Lord, to speak through me and to speak for me, to allow every word that comes out of my mouth to be specifically for those who hear it. And I pray, Lord, that those who hear it have a heart to receive this morning. We thank you so much for understanding and simplicity. And, Lord, I pray that this word is so simple that we can take it, apply it to our lives, and teach others how to apply it to theirs. We declare right now in advance that this is done in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a big, 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 big hand clap. Hey Amen. I want to talk to you about something this morning. And um, it, it's something that happened to me uh, probably a week or two ago that just sparked this. And I'm going to get to that later, but it, it just made me think there is one thing for all of us that probably gets our attention. There's one thing between all of us that probably just make us stop and stare, and that is when we see someone overreacting. Can I get a witness? Because some people have stopped and stared at you. You know, you're in the grocery store, and it's that parent who's, you know, overreacting with discipline their child or something. It just, it gets your attention. Or that coworker who every time they, they ask them to do something extra, they just overreacts. And it just has everyone just stopping. They stop work just to stare. And, and this thing has so much got their attention, it just puts them on pause. And when we see things like that, we always think that, man, it must be something else going on with that person. Something else they dealing with, or something else on the inside of them that, that made them react or overreact like that because the reaction that they gave, the, the effect, the cause did not warrant that type of effect. Now, when you think about overreaction, I'm going to give you a definition here. It means to re to and don't nobody be nudging nobody and looking at somebody, to react to something too strongly, to respond to something with, 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 with too strong an emotion or with unnecessary or excessive action. Let me say that again. To react to something too strongly, to respond to something with too strong an emotion or with unnecessary or excessive action. You know, you overreact when you're in the grocery store and you shoot somebody because you're fussing. Overreaction. The overreaction of, of uh, you know, someone who, who just goes off on someone because they didn't like something they said or because they're driving too slow. Overreaction. The child who thinks, you know, that, that, their mom always overreacts or, you know, what happened, you know, with that coworker. Now, there's always a cause. Somebody said there's always an, a cause. A cause is the reason why something happened. Somebody said there's always an effect. The effect is the, is the conclusion of what happened because of the cause. The cause is always going to come before the effect. I don't care what you do in life. Don't be talking about some, well, that just happened. No, there was a cause. There's a cause. He drunk too much, so he got what? Drunk. There's a cause. 
and there's an effect. He high, why? Because he smoked. There's a cause, and there's an effect. Now, here's something I understand, and I was just thinking about this while I was studying this message. There's always a cause, there's always an effect, but there's always a something that is affected. There's always a cause, there's always an effect, and there's always something that is affected. There's always something that is influenced by your cause and your effect. Hear what I'm saying to you today. There's always somebody watching you. Whether you overreacted or not, there's always a cause, there's always an effect, and there's always what? Something that is affected. And we've all had those moments where we overreacted on something. I'm, I can be a witness to that. But some of you all are so predictable. <laughs> I mean, but Mom, why you bring that up? You already know Dad's going to overreact. Dad, why you bring it up? You know how mom's going to overreact on this? You already know some of those coworkers when something happened, how, how they're going to overreact. People already know you when they bring up a certain situation or a certain topic. They know that you're already going to overreact. We're so predictable. But we're, and sometimes it's not that what we're saying is wrong. We're probably saying what's right, but we're not saying what's right the right way. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know about you, but we can learn a lot about ourselves when we monitor our overreactions. You can learn how much, how, how patient of a parent you are when you go back and monitor your overreactions. You can, you can, you can, you can observe and see how good of a listener you are when you monitor your overreactions. You know, I love my brother. He has this saying when, when the guys are somewhat together. He said, you're not listening to me. And sometimes I realized that I wasn't listening to him because I realized in my mind what he's saying don't make no sense. But I overreacted so much that sometimes what he was saying made good sense. But I had already clocked out <laughs> with what he was saying because of my overreaction. And some of us know there are certain things, you, you, can, you can even find out what certain things trigger you when you monitor your overreactions. When you monitor those times when you was with your friend and they was telling you, child, you just overreacting. And you're like, no, 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 no. And you're just going out and you're not listening to it. You can, if you monitor, if you go back and just monitor your overreactions, I'm telling you, you can learn a lot about yourself. But what if? What if? And, and it, listen to what I'm saying today because I, I just realized something. The word of God never changes. But man, if we keep talking to you about prospering and being successful and how God will blow your mind, but we never deal with the practical things of the word, we're going to stay the same. And so this at a time of, of life and in this world where we are to where people are being killed for no reason because of their overreacting and, and, and marriages are being broken up because of overreacting and kids can't deal with their parents or the relationship is, is, is asunder because somebody is overreacting. We need to deal with this. So what if, what if, what if there was a way to harness the power of a reaction or overreaction for something good? What if there's a way to harness the power of a reaction or overreaction to where it is actually something good? And Jesus, as we're going to read, Jesus is going to insist, not suggest, He's going to insist that we master the art of the unexpected, the unprecedented, and the underreaction. 
somebody say unexpected, unprecedented, underreaction. In other words, your reaction is so under that it appears to be an overreaction in a different direction. In other words, you know, you're looking and something happened and say, who would do that in light of what just happened? Now, Jesus consistently viewed being treated unfairly, unkindly, unjustly as an opportunity where people will stop and stare because they're caught off guard from your underreaction. They realize that cause, the cause didn't warrant that effect. They did what to you? And you still speaking to them? They betrayed you like that? And you, what? You still help them? They said that about you? I heard them say it. I'm telling you, I'm the one that bought it to you. And you still called them? To pray with them? She fronted on you like that in front of all them people? And you didn't tear her weave out? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know what Jesus said in the word. But I believe that that situation right there warrants evil for evil <laughs> two for two eye for eye but those things that you people would believe should have been reciprocal you took it to a point that you got their attention because of how you underreacted to the situation do you know how much it affects a person when you continuously overreact in a negative way. The negative effect that it has on that child or that spouse or that friend or that coworker or that fellow Christian or that person who don't believe in the Christian walk. But do you know how much it affects that person in a positive way? When you learn how to deal with the overreactions, do you know how much it affects your child when they see you in the midst of a confrontation, but you are the one who steps back and humble yourself? Do you know how much it affects that coworker who don't believe in Jesus? Because of all the people that should have got that promotion, it should have been you. But for some reason, you got this manager who don't like you. But yet, you still come and give 110% and speak to them as if nothing ever happened. Do you know how much influence that has on people? Some of y'all need to hear me. Me and my son was talking the other day, right? It was probably about a week or so ago. No, it was, it was a while back. And something, he went somewhere and something happened. And I said, man, you handled that good. He said, yeah, I got it from you, Dad. Because everybody knows my son. He's just this laid back comedian, <laughs> you know. You know, like nothing rattles him. He said, I got it from you, Dad. As calm as you are, I just got it from you. I didn't know he was watching me like that. I didn't know that I was tight. I wasn't, I wasn't shooting for him to be like that as far as me, but I'm glad he is. But I didn't know he was watching. I didn't know that I had that influence on him like that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We have all heard that actions speak louder, speak louder than words. But I'm telling you right now, reactions speak louder than that. Because you can hide. You, your actions, hear me, your actions only tell, tell part of the story. See, I can love you because you showed me that you love me. That's an action. 
I can speak kindly of you because you speak kindly of me. I can talk good about you because you talk good about me. See, I can hide the action because I'm just being who you are. But Lord have mercy when something happens and things don't go good. When you're insulted, when you're talked about, when the gospel is all about you, when somebody ain't treating you respectfully, that's when the reactions come to play. That's when we begin to see the cause and effect. See, actions are nothing because I can be exactly how you are to me. But what if you are not to me how I want to be to you? See, everything fine when it's all good. Everything fine when, when there's no, no, nothing's throwing me off, when there's no triggers, when there's no insults, no controversy, no lies, no bitterness, no wrath, no hate. Everything's good. But what happens when this happens? Because it's at that point that my reaction exposes what's really on the inside of me. So the question today is, how do I want others to be affected through my reaction? Because we as Christians, now I'm, I'm talking to the Christians. I got, got any Christians in the house? Anybody out there, you a Christian? Uh, Jesus follower, right? Because we as Christians, we don't want to sound and react like everybody else. Because when we do that, we miss our opportunity of good influence. Hold on, hold on. Say amen. Like, you got me, right? <laughs> All right. Let me do a check again. Do I have any Christians out there? See, I won't know you're a Christian if you're reacting and sounding like everybody else. I think this is my personal opinion. Personal opinion, everybody. I think it's probably time for us to stop just being a Christian and be Christian. Christian, Christ-like. See, I think what happens a lot of times, we become Christians, and then we get in the door, and we stand right there at the door. I'm going to heaven. Praise God. I'm in. <laughs> hey. It's time for us to stop just being Christians and be Christian. If you're a Christian, did you, have, did you really have to go word for word with them? Did you really have to go insult for insult? Jab for jab? Did that thing really have to linger on that long? Did you really have to say that? Boy, some people are really thinking right now. Did you really have to deal with that in front of all them? Did you have to? Now, let me get on into this. Jesus gives us the application of how we are to react when things don't go our way. I mean, y'all agree, things are not always <laughs> going to go your way. Everybody ain't going to like you. And the truth of the matter is, you ain't going to like everybody. So Jesus gives us the application of how we are to react when things don't go our way. We'll start at Matthew 5 and 38. Jesus talking to the crowd. The, the, the Sermon on the Mount, he said, you have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Anybody ever heard that before? But I tell you, 
do not resist an evil person. Now, here's Jesus here is not talking about self-defense or protection. We, we all have that, that, that on the inside where we're going to protect what's ours. We're going to protect ourselves. He's not talking about self-defense or protection. Right here, Jesus is talking about retaliation. He says, I don't want you to seek to do unto others as others have done unto you. I know they talked about you. I know they said whatever. He's saying, I do not want you to get into that type of thing with anybody. Uh, Michelle mentioned something about peace. You want to really have peace in your life? Somebody just say, let it go. Just say, let, let it go. Jesus said, I, you have heard eye for eye. Some of y'all friends have told y'all that. She did what? I would have did it, the same thing back to her. Jesus said, I'm not looking for you to be a person, a person who, who reciprocates or a person who retaliates. See, by not seeking revenge or retaliation against people, who have personally wronged you or did you wrong or betrayed you, we're actually able to reveal to them what God is like. We're actually able to reveal to people who, what God is actually like, how, how merciful and how graceful. Do you know how graceful and how merciful God is? He doesn't retaliate on us when we sin against him. He said, I, I want you to show people, I want you to throw them off so much by the love that you're going to give to them. Even though they did you wrong, even though they said what they said, even though they betrayed you, even though they didn't help you, even though they wasn't there for you, even though they were the, the person that brought the conversation up against you, I don't want you to retaliate. I want you to show them how graceful and merciful I am through you. See, then he says, if anyone slaps you, uh-oh, Jesus, you're going somewhere. <laughs> See, right there, that's the overreaction time. <laughs> I don't hear nothing else you're saying. <laughs> you have went too far, Lord. <laughs> Hey, that's that part of the Bible. You take the page out. <laughs> that ain't in my Bible. <laughs> but listen to what Jesus is saying. He said, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. <laughs> now listen. <laughs> Yeah, that was a tough one for me back in the day. But listen to what Jesus is saying. This is not a physical slap. This is if you were back in, you know, uh, back in Jesus' days with the Jews, they understood what Jesus was saying. This wasn't a physical slap. Now, remember, most people back then, even today, most people right-handed. So if I slap you, it's going on what cheek? The left cheek. This was basically where it's an insult slap. It's, a, it's, it's like, y'all remember when we used to see it on the movies where they'll do, somebody had that glove and they'll slap them on the right cheek. It's, it's, it's a slap to, it's an insult. It, it's basically when people are insulting you to bait you out of your element. It's when people say things or do things because they know what your triggers are. They know what frustrates you. They know what, what pisses you off. They know what makes you mad. They know when they do that certain thing or say them certain things, it gonna, it's going to draw you out of the light. It's going to draw you out of the light into their darkness and they know that they can deal with you in their darkness better than they can deal with you when you stay in your light. 
And so this is an insult thing. He's saying, look, if anyone is trying to insult you or draw you into something that you know is going to cause you to overreact, he said, do them a favor. Go ahead and just turn the other cheek. Because I don't care. You remember that phrase where you say uh, sticks and stones? can? That ain't true. <laughs> Y'all know it ain't true. That's why a lot of us overreact. But, but, but we're going to use that right now. Sticks and stones can break my bones. But your words ain't going to draw me out of this light into your darkness. And that's why most of us overreact. Because we continue to overreact off of the same thing that triggered us the last time. <laughs> then he goes on to say in verse 41, if anyone forces you to go one mile, be willing to go the extra mile. Now, this was what they would call back then a compulsory um, public service to where Roman, uh, the centurions or the Roman soldiers, if they were walking the streets and they saw someone and they needed help with something, they could force them to help. You remember when Jesus was going to the cross and he was too weak to carry his cross? And the word says that they got someone, they forced him to carry Jesus' cross up the hill, that's what they can do. And he's saying, look, because all of us who, who work on a job, we have managers or whatever it may be, and they ask us to do stuff we don't like, and you know what we do? We overreact. We complain. We call somebody on the phone. Child, get what the joker just asked me to do. I ain't doing that. Jesus said, no. Be willing to go the extra mile. Say, you need me to do that? I'll do that. Some of y'all ain't feeling this right now. <laughs> I know it. I feel some resistance here. He said, be willing to go the extra mile. Why? It's going to put peace in your heart. He says, then give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. He said, be willing to give to those who are in need. Go above and beyond. Now, let's get to the meat. They say, you have heard that it was said to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Hey, that's simple. Love the people who love you. Like the people who like you. That's what those who are close to you tell you, right? Love your neighbor, hate your enemy. He said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who who persecute you, I believe the King James Version says, who despitefully use you. He said, treat your enemy as if they're not your enemy. Treat your enemy as if they're not your enemy. You know what Jesus is saying? Surprise people. Surprise them. Speak to them anyway. Put a big smile on your face anyway. He said, I'm telling you. Now, now I, know, I know this, this sh shakes people up because Jesus is saying, when you pray, I want you to put their name in your prayers. Some of us don't even put our friends' names in our prayers. Jesus is saying, when you pray, I want you to think about that person who tried to draw you into that fight. I want you to think about that person who talked about you and almost tarnished your reputation. I want you to think about that person who, who cheated on you or betrayed you after all those years that y'all was together. I want you to think about that friend who out of 20, 30 years just went the other way and left you hanging dry and they could have helped you so many times. I want you to think about that person who, 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 who did something to you or that manager who, who left you in the, in the rear. I want you to think about those people and I want you to put their name in your prayers. Man, I feel some more resistance. Let it go. Boy, <laughs> let, me, 
Let it go, let it go. Look, I know this is not easy. I know it's not easy. That's why I'm talking about it. Because it's not easy. But Jesus gives us the pattern for how to deal with our, our, uh, our retaliation, shall I say. Now, here's it. Here, what Jesus is about to say. This is what's going to separate the note takers from the doers. This is, this is what's going to separate those who be like, mm, mm, that's good, Pastor. Mm, yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Bring it on. Say it. This is what's going to separate those who, the humors, the note takers, from those who actually do the notes that they're taking. This is what's going to separate the Christians from the followers. This, I, I, I love this. I heard someone say this. This is what's going to separate the folks for who Christianity is a point of reference from those who understand that Christianity is the framework for all of life in every decision. This is going to separate those who just go to work and say, I'm a Christian, from those who actually made Christianity the framework of their everyday life. Jesus says in verse 43, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, what he's about to say is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the pot gets hot without a pot holder. This is where the lion meets the tiger face to face. This is where the confrontation between those who believe in tithing and those who don't. Because there's been a lot of debates going on between Christians. And it makes no sense. That, but I tell you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He's telling you why we have to learn how to pray for our enemies and love those who hate us. Why? So that you will reflect the very character of your Father in heaven. So that you will reflect the very kind. This takes you from saying, this is just how I am. To I'm willing to change because that's not how he wants me to represent him. This is what takes you from saying, I'm going to just always be like that. To saying, no, I got to be more like him. You want to know how God is? I'm almost done. You want to know how God is? You want to know what God is like? I always say this. I said this before. Take a glimpse of Jesus. Follow the Gospels. If you never read the Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you never read it, maybe, you know, you might be like me. Now you have to read with glasses. So a lot of times I sit and listen to it. Even if you have to go and listen to the Bible, just listen to the four Gospels over and over and over again and just observe how compassionate, how loving, how Jesus dealt with confrontation. Just observe the life of Jesus. Don't worry about who he hid. How he did. Look at how he reacted to things and you'll notice exactly how God is towards us. How would we know how God really is without an example? How would they know how God really is without an example? We cannot be like everybody else. You have got to stop overreacting and talking to people the way you talk to people and dealing with things that, now I'm, I'm not a person talking about y'all now, I'm not, whoever watches, I'm just saying in general, you have got to stop being like that. You say you love them, why do you talk to them like that? Amen. 
Because I'm telling you, it's good. I love we come out here and we do pay it for it. And people, man, it's such a blessing to see, to give and, 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 to, to, and, and for those who give to the needy and you, you do certain things, that's good, but that's not enough. Because if you come out here and you give and you help people and you do all this, but your personal life is a mess because you don't know how to deal with people and talk to people, you just messed it all up. Because one of the main people who pull up out there to get one of them boxes to catch your tail in that grocery store while you cussing that tail out because she short you your money a little bit. I say, you right, Pastor. And you know what they're going to say? And you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> I promise you, every non-Christian got that little, that, that, that one in their trigger. Ready to pull it out. Now he goes to the heart of the point that he's trying to make. He said, if you love those who love you, what reward or what recognition will you get? Why would I applaud you for loving people who love you? There's no recognition in that. He said, if you love those who love you, what reward would you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Even the group of people you don't like get along? And if you greet or welcome only your own people, that's not going to stand out. What are you doing more than others? Don't even the pagans do that? Jesus said, I need you to do more. Don't be, you're not getting recognition because you, you love people who love you. Because you're greeting your own people? I need you to do stuff that stands out. I need you to do stuff that gets people attention. I need you to do more than what's expected of you. I need you to do more than the usual. I need you to do something that stands. I need you to go the extra mile. I need you to not repay evil for evil. I need you to not deal with a tooth for a tooth or an eye for an eye. I need you to begin to pray for your enemies and love those who despitefully use you. I need you to stand out. I need you to resist the temptation of your flesh. That part. <laughs> Jesus wants us to stand out when the opportunity comes, when the confrontation comes, when things don't go your way, when you're treated unjustly. So when you're in the midst of these, this conflict and these things that happen, I need you to ask yourself the question, what, it look, what would it look like in this moment to react as my heavenly father? Then he says in verse 48, I'm getting ready to close. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Because challenges are going to come. People are going to try you. But I want you to be perfect toward others as your heavenly father has been perfect towards you. I want you, in a sense, to overdo the kindness. Do more than expected, but do it in the opposite way. The story, this is what triggered this message. I had a um, this U-Haul storage place. And so I was, I got all of my stuff out of the storage place. And so when I, when I got it out, I closed it back. And I was going to go up front, but it was crowded. So I went home to get online to, to close my storage out. So I go on, and they said, well, you need to take a, you know, it tells you to take a picture of it being empty and then come and download 
upload the picture. And so I go back up there. It was probably a couple of days later when I could get back up there. So I go back up there. I open up the storage, take a picture, and somebody done put their stuff in there. I'm like, what in the world? So you know what I did? <laughs> Got their stuff, and I threw it out. Take a picture. I go back up front, because now nobody's in the office. I go up front, and I tell the lady, I say, hey, now keep in mind, where my storage is, there's no camera in that, that breezeway. So I go back up. I tell the lady, I say, hey, you know, I took my stuff out of storage the other day. I come back today, somebody put it. She said, I don't see that. Now, I'm talking to one lady, but the manager is over here. I'm telling the lady, somebody put some stuff in my storage. The manager said, I don't see that. I don't see nobody doing that. I'm talking to the lady. She said again, ain't nobody did that. I said, I don't know what she talking about. I said, but that is that. And I got a smile on my face. Can y'all believe this? I said, I don't know what she talking about, but that is not my stuff. She just talking. And, and, then, and then they begin to question me. Well, when did you come up here? I said, does it matter? Don't y'all have cameras? And then you have the car key so they can tell when you go in and out. I said, just check the cameras. You'll see that I came in. You'll check my car. You'll know when. So she said, well, let's go back in and look at it. We go back and look at it. She said, and then I open my storage. It's, now it's empty because I don't put it. I said, here's the stuff. She said, I, don't, I still don't see that. I said, I don't see. She said, I don't see nobody doing that. And so I said, well, there's no cameras here. I said, there's no reason for me to bring it up to you. I could just left it here. She said, yeah, but I don't see nobody doing it. At this point, I believe the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. Say, don't say nothing else. Just step out of the side of this conversation. So she's still talking. After this point, said nothing else to her. We go up front. She give me the zero balance bill, <laughs> which is what I needed. And I said, you have a blessed day. And I walked out. And I got in my car. And I said, Lord, how'd I do? Because whatever I do, I want to make sure that I'm exemplifying you to the highest degree. Do you know how easy it was for me to overreact? I know some of y'all would have been hotter than boiled water. <laughs> And it's a lot of people who would have handled that a lot, of, lot differently. But when I pulled off, I felt so good. Because as my father is perfect towards me, I want to make sure that I'm perfect towards other people. Regardless of how they treat me, I need to treat them the way Jesus is telling me to treat them. So before your flesh takes over the next time, ask yourself, how would my heavenly father want me to react to this? What cause and effect could affect someone's life today? And it's so funny. It was a guy in there, and he was just listening to the whole thing. He said, man, you good. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you good, brother. I would have handled that totally different. But my father was watching. I had to handle it that way. So what situation do you know? What triggers you? Go back and look at some of the times where you overreacted. And you'll see yourself. <laughs> you'll see all of you. But just know it's not the last time you're going to be tested. So how will you deal with this the next time? And somebody say, Amen. In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for your word. We thank you for life. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your wisdom. So, Lord, we pray for wisdom today because you said if we ask, you'll give it. We pray for wisdom, Lord, your wisdom on how to respond correctly, how to react correctly how to say the right things, how to deal with things, how to deal with our emotions. Lord, give us wisdom so that we won't react too strongly when, when, when confrontation comes. 
Give us, give us patience. Lord, patience to, 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 to know the difference of when someone's trying to draw us in or when the enemy is trying to put us in a situation or a place that we really don't need to be in. Lord, deal with our hearts. Deal with our minds. Help us to be settled. Help us to be at peace. Lord, we know that we, sh we should pray for our enemies. Teach us how to do that. That is not easy, God. Teach us how to do that. Teach us how to pray for those right now who we, we have strife with. Teach us how to pray for those right now who we're bitter against and, and who we're dealing with with all type of situations, Lord, and we don't know what to turn. Teach us. We're mad. We're angry. We're frustrated. And we don't want to be like this, God. So give us the strength. Give us the strength to allow that name to come out of our mouths. And Lord, give us the strength to treat our enemies as if they are not our enemies. We thank you for your love, for your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you all so much for watching us today. We hope that you receive something out of that message. Today is a new day. Amen. Amen. If you're watching us and you have not received Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, we want to give you the opportunity, opportunity to do that today. Look, the Word tells us that if you confess with your mouth and that you believe in your heart that Jesus came and that he died and he shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, but then God raised him on the third day. He said, he said you'll be saved. It's a very simple prayer. And you're watching us today. If you would like to receive him, just repeat after me. Say, God, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe he died. I believe he shed his blood for the forgiveness of all my sins. But on the third day, you, God, raised him from the dead. And today, Jesus is alive. And I receive him into my heart. In Jesus' name, man, I'm telling you, if you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. Do me a favor. Get yourself in a good church where you can hear the word of God. Go to our website, victoryworldwide.org. Go to the tab where it says become a member. Put your information in there, and someone will give you a call. Also, if you would like to give today, if, if, whether it's through your tithing or your offering, or you'd like to give a seed, the information is on the screen. We have several ways. You have no excuse to do what God is telling you to do. We have several ways. Let me tell you something. We have Cash App. We have GiveLify. You can text the word give to the number that's on the screen. You can go Zelle. Let me tell you something. We are getting there. You hear what I'm saying? Or you can go to our website, victoryworldwide.org. You can give all these ways along with PayPal. So whatever, you know, route you have to take. We thank you so much from Pastor Wanda Smith to the entire Victory Nation. We thank you for watching us. Catch us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. And we will be right back here next Sunday at 9 a.m. We love you and we hope you have a blessed wonderful week and do me a favor don't overreact <laughs> amen we will see you next sunday in jesus name have a blessed one amen